Welcome, everybody. We got Aries. We got Venus. We got the 10th house. So Venus would be a contract. Hmm. Establishing harmony and an enterprise. That's what I just heard. Putting everything together, 10th house with Aries and Venus. So I kind of see like a work contract. That's what I see here. A work contract. I mean, ener like the energy of Aries is is emperor, right? Nine of cups. Something that somebody's wanted for a really long time. 10th house enterprise Capricorn Knight of strands. Oh my God. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Argyle. <laughs> oh, delivering that pizza, which is the best attitude in the world. The page of dice. <clears throat> not realizing how talented you can be, you know, like it's, and there's nothing better than loving what you do. Right. And being able to do something that you love so much is, you know, people die for that kind of job. Like, honestly, that's, that's a job that, you know, people who actually appreciate their jobs and really love them and, and never see it as work, you know, like the every day they go to work, it's not work. It's, it's, they love what they do and, and everybody's got to work. Everybody's got to make money. You know, you got to get out there. So why not try and do what you love? And then no matter how much it scares you, right. Um, it's like a partnership, right. Two, uh, two of cups with a, is a partnership, right. They're riding that bike together and then the demigorgon comes out and he just like, he just takes everything, you know, like he doesn't care. He's just like, I'm taking it. And, and you know what, honestly, an emperor could do that, you know, like they could take a lot. I mean, emperors don't tend to do that. They don't really tend to, uh, steal, but it's like when something gets offered to you, you, you might always kind of be that person that like kind of hymns and haws about it. And they're like, I don't really know. Like, I don't know if it's going to make me happy. I don't really know if this is really what I want to do, but this seems to be like, yeah, I'll do this. Look at that on the top of the deck, Hopper himself as the emperor. Okay, so he's sitting on the stairs in the woods to his cabin. That's where he keeps Elle safe, right? That's where he keeps Eleven. So nobody finds her and, and takes her again and, and fucks with her. So it's like maybe maybe you're going to find somewhere, somewhere safe to go where people aren't going to fuck with you anymore. There's the sun. And the sun just came up in the last reading as like the leading element, Okay. As the leading planet, sorry. With the Ten of Wands and the Ace of Pentacles. This is what I'm fucking talking about. You, you're communicating with something. I don't know if you know right now that you are, but you are physically communicating with somebody that's not around you. Okay, that's what this whole card is about. That's what Joyce is doing. She's communicating with Will. Because Will is in another dimension. He's on the other side. So she uses the lights to talk to him. Okay, ten of strands. That's that's the end. She, once she can talk to Will, then everything's fine. And that's the sun. Okay, so it's like realizing that you are doing something right now, whether you know you are or not. And it has, I think it has something to do with your work. I don't know if you're working with somebody right now that's got their eye on you and who always has had their eye on you. Maybe you served somebody. Maybe you've gotten in touch with a client and you don't know who they are. 
right? And because they haven't revealed themselves yet to be like, hey, by the way, it's me that uh, has been trying to get a hold of you or it's me that you're coming to meet, right? It's like something has to do with somebody's job. Like the whole part, like the whole point of Steve working at Scoops Ahoy is is so then uh, Dustin can get in and figure out that um, military code that he heard over the radio. Okay. So because he works at the mall, then they're able to get in. So it's like, I feel like wherever it is you work, okay, you give it all you've got. And because you give it all you got, like Argyle delivering pizzas, he's always got the best mood. He's trying to sell you the best pies. He just, he doesn't care. The sun is on him right? It's like this. This is why Yuri won't stop staring at me. Okay. Because look at how happy Yuri is at, at the fair. Okay. He like, he was just held up in this Russian center where he's, um, trying to create nuclear power to open up uh, a door and a gateway to another realm. You know, he's, he's working for these people. He's doing all this harsh stuff. And then he gets out and poof, then he's out a, he's out a, he's out a fucking, He's at a, what do you call that? Carnival, right? And he's just loves it. He's, he's just so happy, right? And that's, that's kind of what I'm getting is like, I don't know if somebody is just really happy every time they see you, right? And it's like what they want and, and they know that you just, you do it with the best attitude. That's the whole part is like, you don't, you might not even really know what you're doing. It might be something new to you, but like, you know, whatever this is, it could be somebody that... You know, you could say for say, okay, say you work at like uh, an electronics store or you work at a restaurant or you work somewhere uh, at a bank or something and you, you see this person. Okay. You don't know who this person is. This person doesn't know. Um, they know you, you don't really know them because you're just providing a service. You're just doing something. You're providing a service somehow. Okay. You could be doing this on your time off or while working. Okay. But it's something, it's something that has to do with what it is that you're doing because you love it so much. Okay. That it's made this emperor. Okay. Take notice. Like, Hey, if you came here, you might feel a lot better. You might feel a lot safer. Okay. And it's, it's, it's about how you communicate with them. It's so much of, or, or this is going to be something that you go through a lot of euphoria, you know, a lot of, uh, childhood memories coming up a lot of like really good times where you are riding a double-sided bike. You know, you are downstairs playing dungeons and dragons with your friends again. Right. My sister and I have been playing Yahtzee like motherfuckers. Right. It's like, it's like just to do something, you know, to get like back into that playing something fun and playing games and getting back into just living again people don't know how to live anymore and it's really sad it's all work 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 and then relationship relationship relation you know like it's just it's so hard people they can't breathe anymore oh my gosh this is who i was waiting for what is her name oh geez i forget her name Lady Cornflake or something like that. Oh my God, who is she again? In Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, Page of Scoots with the Nine of Cups. Or the Ten of Cups. No, that's the Five of Cups. Like, not, you know... I don't know if you're giving somebody a chance at getting their life back together again after something fell apart on them. Or they, they see you as like, you know, you're a half cup. What do you call that? Half, you know, is the glass half empty or half full? And it's like, you're half full, you know, like, and you know, just because you lose your tires, it doesn't break your spirit. You know, like you find another way. It's always about finding another way to, to, uh, defend yourself and to put boundaries around yourself. And, um, a lot of times I think maybe you scare people because, um, of how well you do things, right. It's all, it's all a learning curve for you as well. And I think that you just try to do things to the best of your ability. And sometimes it gets noticed and sometimes it doesn't, but for once it's actually getting noticed that your skills are, are 
you know, like people could have said, what are you ever going to do with that? That's so stupid. But they don't, they don't see that what you were trying to create was a world. So then you can communicate with other people. Right. So I don't know if this like has to do with some, something on social media, right. You deliver something so well, you're doing something so well that it's caught the eye of somebody, right. Who knows that they can partner with you really well because you'll take things seriously. Right. And you do the job really well. Okay. Tenth house. Ooh, there's the Empress. Okay, with the King of Scoops. Okay, so this is this king, okay, is obviously this emperor. Okay, who now sees or are letting me know that they see you as the empress. They see you as somebody that they can work with. Like here is both of these people are sitting down. Okay. Like she is ready to kick this thing's ass for taking her kid. Okay. And what does Steve do? Okay. I'm just saying Steve steps up like Steve. He always makes jokes. Like, why am I always the babysitter? Why am I always the babysitter? And it's like, you're always the babysitter because the universe trusts you being the babysitter, right? So it's like you are sitting on quite, or somebody's got quite a lot of treasure. Like, and I don't see treasure as material gain, whereas I see it as what this person has or what you have. It doesn't compare to treasure, you know, because it's its own treasure in itself. Like, what is treasure? Why does treasure have to um, be worth something like it should be worth something in a different way. Whereas it has no value, right? Where it has no value. As I just moved my crystal statue here that I bought for like $5 and it's real China, like real crystal. Um, it should not have been that price, but it was that price. And it's like, sometimes, you know, even China can appear as fake even crystal can appear as fake, right? People can appear as fake, but it doesn't mean that they are, they can be very real. And, and a lot of people, you know, would just walk past this and be like, it's fake. It's nothing, you know, not even see it. Whereas you might find the treasure. You might know how to find the treasure because it's things that everybody else walks by. Right. And that's why, I mean, Hopper becomes such an awesome, uh, character as the emperor because he listens like he listens so well he listens to the kids when they speak and then he believes them right like he you, you some things are so hard to believe but trust me if you hear something that's so far-fetched it just might be true Okay. And that's what, what Joyce has to go through as the empress. Okay. She has to, she has to realize that Will is talking to her through the lights, but she looks like a fucking cuckoo head to everybody. She looks, she looks crazy, but it got her son back. So do you think she gives a fuck if she looked crazy for a minute? No, no, because that craziness led her to something, right? They're sticky some stickiness on the back of that. It's like, you know, something, and I can't really see it. So, you know, something, something is definitely, um, sticking with you. Okay. And it's something that you can't see because you're too busy working, right? You're too, you're too busy working. You can't notice everything that's going around when you're working, right? If your job isn't to notice everything, Six of Swords. Six of Swords, Seven of Swords. It's like... Honestly, the way that I see it, I really don't think that somebody is going to not see you. Okay. 
there are a lot of red flags and not red flags in a bad way. Red flags to notify somebody like, um, hello, we're trying to get a hold of you. Right? Please don't. Um, yeah, like somebody can't see something. They can't see that it's the end of something, you know? There's a tower. Tower came through the last reading as well. Okay, I just want to say tower came through. Something is getting, a lot of things are getting destroyed. Okay. And, um, ah, oh God. There's Eddie. Eddie fucking dies. He sacrifices himself. There's the lovers. Lovers came through the last reading. Ace of strands. Yeah. Ace of wands. There's the wheel of fortune. High priestess. It's like, I think, I think a lot of the collective knows that they're something in their life is going to change because of how hard they've worked. Okay. And it doesn't take rocket science to figure it out. You know, like, like you're very much aware that what you do, um, you get noticed. Okay. You get noticed and, um, that's a strength about you, right? It can make you sad sometimes because people notice you, but they doesn't mean that they're saying anything to you. It doesn't mean that they're engaging with you. It means that they're just noticing you. Right. And that can be very lonely, right? What you do can be very lonely. Like if you think about it, our guy, I mean, he's delivering pizzas. Um, he's all by himself. He hangs out with one friend, Jonathan. Very lives, like lives a very secluded life. Okay. And, and that's one thing. Like I'm very thankful for the things that I can do because I don't have any friends and I don't really, I like it that way because I realized how needy people are and how much they need you. And it's just like, I like to be a recluse. I don't really go out. I went out today, which was surprising. Um, you know, I've got my animals and I've got my things and I, and I do crafts and I, I don't, I don't like going out. It, it makes me very uncomfortable, but I went out today. I went and saw a movie. I couldn't believe it. I haven't been to the movies for years. And, uh, you know, it was an awesome chance just to get out of the house and do something on my day off, you know, and just enjoy. And, and that's why I feel like when you work really hard, then you deserve to enjoy the fruits of your labor and you deserve to enjoy, you go to work every day, then like fucking enjoy it, you know, like, because I'm telling you, like you could suddenly not have any money and, 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 and that's not what's going to make you happy. Having money is not something that is the reason why you should be happy. You know, like why you work so hard should make you happy at the end of the day, because you have something to do your money with, you know, like it, there's always something amazing to spend money on that makes you feel really good about how hard you work for it. Right. Because we all have to work. We all have to do something and, and money is the reward for that. Right. So, so to be recognized for something and then to all of a sudden be making more money or to be, um, be, be doing something suddenly that, that you would never have imagined, but that you've worked so hard to do. Right. I almost feel like, again, I didn't really do the analogy, but I feel like it's almost somebody working at like a Best Buy or something. And then they suddenly they're selling $400,000 vehicles right? They just, they've got, they know how to sell and, and they sold somebody this TV. And then the person came back and, and was like, Hey, is this salesperson working? You know? And then you, you sold them something amazing again. And then they were like, I can't, you know, do you know how many times I've actually been, um, I've been hunted by people, um, because of my bartending skills. And it's been like, I had one, um, the last time it happened was in the winter, uh, these, uh, bar owners came in and, uh, she was like, are you happy here? <laughs> and at the time I was, and, uh, she, she runs this little bar across, uh, across the way there. And, uh, it really sucked because it was her and her husband that ran the place and they seemed really nice and, and, and good people. And, uh, you know, sometimes you get headhunted and you don't know, you don't know. Like you, I just, you know, I talked to them as I talked to anybody else. And they were like, you know, I, you know, fucking bad servers out there, bad bartenders out there. Oh my God. Especially if you live in a small town and you do something like you do work at the only best buy or something. I mean, do it to the best of your abilities because you'd be amazed, um, how many offers that you could get from other people who are looking for a salesman like you, like I, I, you might not go, uh, all the way to the top, but I mean, fuck, 
just to, just to be able to change your career in general or to get up the ladder just a, a little bit by being recognized for a skill is amazing. So congratulations. Um, finally, being recognized for doing something is amazing, right? Because again, people might not believe in you, but I mean, we're not trying to make people believe in us. We're just trying to make the day go by fast and enjoy what we can. You know, you have you have the ability to put a smile on your face every day and it doesn't matter what job you do and it doesn't matter how awful your life is. You have the ability to change your attitude. And when you change your attitude and you go to that shitty job and you serve those people and you make a difference, you know, just in one person by smiling, they could turn around and offer you something that you we're never thinking that you would get just by being you. So, and now I'm getting this song in my head. It has been playing in my head for the last couple days. Okay. I don't know at the end of what movie, um, I I'm, I'm watch. I can see these people dancing. I guess at the end of the movie and the credits are coming up or something, but the song is raise your glass by pink. I don't listen to pink not a pink fan, but that song, um, can really like, it, it's just a happy song. And, and the whole point is the analogy of raise your glass because you did something and you're, you, you got the eye of something. And, um, in the midst of everybody looking at you and being like, you know, you're so stupid for doing that. You're so dumb for doing that. What do you think you're going to do with that? And then you actually do something with it. It's kind of incredible. It's not that you have to defy the odds, not that you have to prove yourself right, but then to be able to prove yourself right, you're like, oh my God, this is going to be the talk of the town. <laughs> Page of Cups, friggin' Jonathan. Oh my God. Jonathan is so emotional. He is so emotional and he's crying in that picture. And, uh, you know, and honestly, so is Victor Cruelly. Honestly, I can't lie. Like that guy is, is he loved his family, right? And he misses his family. And, and that's the thing. Jonathan loves his brother. And when Will is missing, it's like the end of the world, you know? So it's almost like whatever it is, whatever you're doing, whatever's missing from your life that you don't even really know is missing from your life. I feel like it is kind of the end of the world to not have it around. So, so raise your glass. If you are wrong and I'll do well. Oh, it just makes me, oh, it just makes me dance. Anyways, that's all it's been doing is just making me dance in my head. So you want to listen to that song, do it. If not, just raise your glass because you got the eye of something. So, um, good for you. If you want a personal reading, Whitney Moonshine at gmail.com. If not, enjoy the channel. Um, thanks for your likes, your subscribes, and for letting me know that you appreciate things. And I'm a little bit uh, behind um, with readings right now. And I, my life has just been like kind of chaotic. So uh, if your emails get unanswered or something, trust me, I've read them or I will read them. And um, I'll try to get to those readings as soon as possible. And yeah, have an amazing uh, week. If I don't see you, peace out. Take care.